No notes. Your Minnesota Wild, best team I've ever seen. Okay, I'm not going to go that far, but your Minnesota Wild playing incredible hockey. We love it. Plus, the Minnesota Frost return to action this weekend. That's right. Full-blown hockey season, ladies and gentlemen. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, brought to you by Soda Stick, presented by Talk North, Royal Credit Union, Livia, Jim Beam, and Grain Belt. This is Season 6, Episode 255. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Black Friday deals are here at SodaStick.com. Get 25% off your favorite Soda Stick items. That's hats, that's hoodies, that's sticker sheets, mugs, whatever it is for the gift giving season. SodaStick.com has it in a fun and unique fashion. Plus, pull tabs now being tossed into packages and you can get free shipping with $99 worth of purchases or more. Again, 25% off for their Black Friday deal site-wide auto applied at checkout. Don't forget to check out sodastick.com year round for all your favorite Minnesota sports garb. Hello everybody. What's up? We're back. Episode 255. We apologize for the delay. We're just giving you the most up-to-date content, baby. That's what we're doing. That's what we're here for. We wanted to take into account the Minnesota Wild, who played last night against the league's number one Winnipeg Jets, falling 4-1. to one. But uh, I'm Jesse Pierce. She's Kirsten Kroll. Kirsten, we don't need to dive very much into it because, again, it was one game. That 4-1 score, not at all indicative of how no. your Minnesota Wild played. No, absolutely not. And it, also, too, the game didn't. I don't, I don't know. It's not fair to say the game got away from them in the third period. But once, I mean, it was, went down 3-1. You kind of knew with a few minutes to go. It was like, okay, this one probably is done. Then the empty net goal was a dagger in the coffin. But for them to be able to keep, not even keep pace with Winnipeg, I thought Minnesota dominated. The shots on net was very indicative of that. And even watching the game, I was like, wow, Minnesota's playing a lot in their offensive end, like truly controlling the pace of the puck and all of that. So I was mm -hmm. very impressed, and no, the score did not indicate how good of a game that was last night. They did. I mean, I was beyond impressed. Probably the best first period I have seen them play all season, if not ever. And it wasn't even the shot attempts. They were good quality shots, right? Mm -hmm. High danger shots. Connor Hellybuck is going to look so freaking good in a Team USA jersey. I cannot wait for Four Nations. He is such a tremendous goaltender. Ends up turning away 43 of 44 shots. But you had mentioned the third period. That's been their strongest period. You go back to the Calgary game and that was by far the best. They had like 30 goals in the third period on average this season, more than any of the other. However, it kind of flip-flopped. And I had asked Matt Boldy that last night and he had said, you know, you have a one goal lead in the third. So you're kind of sitting back and it's going to be harder to get some of those chances. We had a few shifts where it kind of came together and had chances, but overall he felt they played great. And I would agree the team top mm -hmm. to bottom played really well. They get Kirill Kaprizov back guys. Don't worry. There's no concern. There's no lingering issue for him. We love to hear that. Um, Kirsten, I, we could talk about Kirill every single week, but mm -hmm. I think we should, right? Like he's just still, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed that he had to miss games because his uh, road streak ended, right? His point yeah. road streak ended. I was bummed for that, but he's just a beast out there too. Like he comes back in the Edmonton game after being hurt. He misses it. I guarantee Kirill did not want to miss that Calgary game, but everybody was like, you should probably just sit out and chill and sit back. Um, you know, he gets shut down by the Winnipeg Jets, which is going to happen, but still Kirill just continues to be on another level. 1.79 points per game creates about 0.67 goals per game, 12.8 total. Um, it's just Kirill, man. Kirill. He's out here taking names and I love it. No, and I can imagine too from, you know, again, just trying to put myself in a competitor's mindset. I hear it. No, there's no way he wanted to miss those games. And I'm sure it wasn't even necessarily like his call, just kind of a, being extra cautious around your star player. Like if this is something, let's not make it even worse. And thankfully it appears to not, I don't know, could be lingering 
I don't know. No, that's not even what I wanted to say. I'm sorry. Yeah. The coffee has not Take kicked that. in yet. Take He's good. Back. He's good. I know. He I came literally back. asked Heinz that last night. No, said, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. The coffee literally. I rolled out of bed 20 minutes ago, guys. <laughs> give me a little something. I give you nothing. No, whatever. That happens, I guess. I'm just going to take another <laughs> sip of my coffee and hope I That's good. You know what? I'll up. talk. I'll talk. You you drink and we'll just we'll make this a, a whole thing. Uh, you know, Minnesota loses at home and we all know home ice advantage, right? Our ice, all of that stuff. This year, they're not as strong as ho- at home. And granted, they've had some tougher competition while being at home. You've got the Jets. You had the Dallas Stars. Again, not a bad game against the Dallas Stars last week either. But they are currently 4-3-1 and one at home compared to 9-1-3 and three on the road. How much does that truly matter? Yes, again, you want to be good in front of your home crowd. You want to have that advantage. But it seems like it's almost more important to be a good road team in some conjuncture as well, right? Like, it's especially when the road is so tough for a lot. And I I think the difference maker, this is just my opinion. I could be wrong. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, Kirsten. They have long road stretches, right? Like Mm -hmm. with the exception of this weird one-off in Buffalo that they have tomorrow, which is just kind of obnoxious and then come back. But I wonder if it's because, yeah, you have the long road stretches and they're really just finding ways. I, I find more value in them doing well on the road than even at home. Yeah, I would typically agree. I would rather have them perform well on the road than at home because that's when you're out of your element and it seems harder to kind of get a grasp on your routine and your style and everything um I will say this season and again you mentioned the long road stretches you look at October especially Mm -hmm. and then even like those couple stretches here in November lots of time spent on the road early on so as of right now Love for them to be better on the road than at home. But come December, when we are at home nine times, double the times we're on the road, you best be performing at home. Let's not even think about March yet. March, home ice is yours. It is. Can you believe that December's next week already? No. Not wild. I feel like I blinked and the year was over. But also at the same time, no, yeah. uh, That was going to get, I don't know. I was going to be like, this year was, you know, and a diff, it brought, this year brought its challenges. (laughs) And I was going to be like, it was a bad year. I'm like, no, this was actually a good year. Hey, way to to perk it up, though. I'm so perky. I'm so happy for being half asleep right now, you guys. I'm very chipper. I'm in a great mood. That's good. I love that. You hear that, Marlo? Yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of Marlo, I guess a little shout out to them. They just dropped a new kind of P dub design with mm-hmm. uh, all proceeds going to um, Sophie, Sophie Squad, Squad, which we absolutely love. Um, I had recommended he do that because I love Sophie Squad, and so I love that they're doing that. So go check out their merch over at 10K. A mm-hmm. uh, little shout out. We'll talk about P dub in the second half of this week's episode because and I'll put aside me and Marlo's feud for a minute because just that's for super a moment, cool. just for I, just you... for this, yeah, that's super cool of them. Um, but otherwise, back, any yeah. other time, me and Marlo are fighting because he tried coming for my job. Yeah, he'll continue to do so. It's and he's going to. He's sleep with one eye open. Mm, I know. I had a segue. And yeah, I, I know. Like, I had to interrupt it was, you. It was there. And then it went like. It went away. Kind of like my um, hopes and dreams. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's back. And no, I'm back. laughing. I'm laughing. We're happy. It, I saw the Good opportunity. Life. I had to. Mm, this is true. Um, I'll come. It's going to come to me, guys. I'm not going to let you sit here and I don't I don't know what it was. Well, we're just going to move on. I've already forwarded. They're like, they've already, all right. they've already they've already turned the app off. They're already like, you know what? This episode was late. We don't care. Mark Andre Fleury's not going to show up. Kirsten's still oh, asleep. You know, Actually, just... our dear friend and loyal listener, Kurt, yes, last night at the game is like, any other special guests this week? And I was like, no, you had Mark Andre Fleury last week. Like, yeah. you have us this week. Yeah. Like, you were Rude. spoiled. And he agreed, but he was like, I guess I'll still listen. <laughs> Actually, you know who just walked through the door? Jonas Brodeen. Everybody, Jonas, hey. Hello. I wish. Yeah, you know, we play we play good hockey. I tried to trick Kirsten with the Jonas Brodine. It didn't work. Brilliant. I knew what you were doing. <laughs> if I had a male 
do it and pretend? Do you think that would have been better? I don't know. If their accent is as bad as yours, no. <laughs> Very good accent. You'll it's know. not. Each, each episode, maybe that's another new gimmick that we do. Each episode, Jesse tries a new accent. Please don't. <laughs> mm, you know, it could bring a little fun. Uh, ironically, he had walked past me like right as I was uh, texting you back and I was this close to being like, Jonas, come here. Uh, come here. I need you for a moment. But... I ugh, I would have died. That would have been so great. So hilarious. Uh, this is Watch this segue now. Watch what I just did here. Uh, speaking of Jonas Brodin and the defense, Kirsten, Minnesota Wild allowing the fourth fewest goals in the league with 54, tied for second in goals against per game at 2.48. On the flip side, fourth most goals with 70, averaging 3.33. Per game, uh, they have the fewest regulation losses. I'm still, I think, kind of in shock at how good Philip Gustafson and the back end are playing. I'm not surprised necessarily with the defense. Now, the defense had its problems last year. Again, we we harp on the goaltending struggling. But to me, I saw so many defensive gaps and holes. And yes, a large part of that is Jared Spurgeon. But John Merrill was not playing great. Um, you know, Zach Bogosian has stepped up a little bit this year. Declan Chisholm seen more. In general, I thought the defense all struggled. But together like they're one of the best defensive teams in the nhl they have the fewest five on five goals mind you um and it's just it's incredible to watch philip gustafson emerge into even better than i think i foresaw him being it makes me happy like after the struggle and the pain of last year we deserve this we all deserve this philip gustafson especially deserves his redemption tour does it feel fake? Like, it just, I can't, like, the fact that we were, you know, discussing yesterday, this is the one and two team in the league. And yes, it's only November, but also, as we all know, the saying goes, by American Thanksgiving, where you are in the standings is pretty indi indi indicative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say indicative. I don't, anyway. I think indicative. there is. I don't think right. indicative is a word. I think it is. I think it's I think just it's a different it. it's pronunciation. It's like pecan and pecan. Yeah, it's like a indicative that's how i normally indicative. pronounce it indicative. indicative indicative anyway indicative um it in indicative of where you will fall at the end of the year i had i lost my train of thought again um yeah it's just kind of wild to me like they're they're gonna continue this pace i think like i don't see anything slowing down because they're kind of a complete team I, we just talked about the defense. We talked about how good the offense is. It's not even complementary scoring. It's secondary scoring, right? Like it's just. Let it's me crazy. look at look ahead here. Yes, please do. Buffalo, easy dub. Chicago, yeah. redemption, easy dub. Yep. Nashville, unless they find their U two moment, another easy dub. Um, then you get to December. Vancouver. Although Nashville beat Winnipeg before Winnipeg came into Minnesota. Yeah, but you're going to have You'll your off nights every yes. now and then. December, yeah. then they play Vancouver. That's going to be tough. But then Anaheim, dub. LA, dub. Utah, dub. Edmonton, dub. I, if Connor McDavid's doing Connor McDavid things, dub. But then it's a little tougher. I mean, Philly, I don't fully know what to make of Philly. But then you get Vegas, you get Florida, then it's back to Utah, Winnipeg at Winnipeg, then Chicago, then Should Dallas. We go to that Winnipeg game? It's the 21st. I don't know. That's oh, the December. week before Christmas. Yeah, no, that's too tough. I don't know. I think they should continue this pace as things progress. All that to be said, all of the uh, breakdowns of the next 20 games. <laughs> <laughs> that was great breakdowns that was a yes. great schedule outlook yeah i mean it's not even the competition right like it's just the matter of fact that they i don't see as many <clears throat> glaring mistakes or anything that you know there's always room for improvement not everything is perfect and i don't want it to be perfect um i you want to know should we should we go off i'm gonna i'm gonna say it the thing that needs to improve is Yakov Trenin. And, and by improve, I mean he needs to be off this Minnesota Wild team. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done playing nice with it. I can't. I can't. The way See? that he tried to help Ewell Eriksson Eck yesterday, which then turned into a goal for the Winnipeg Jets last night. That he was falls bad. in Calgary. Like, I don't... I didn't have, like, high expectations for him, but he is, like, below the bar that was even set. I just... I'm not sure. And the thing that irritates me more is not just watching him underperform and be very underwhelming night in and night out it's the fact that this is a four-year contract 
Like, mm, no, uh, uh-uh, not doing it. See, I will play devil's advocate, though, from an article I didn't fully read full disclosure but i believe it no, was written by russo Russo's. with the uh, no it's it was a i'm sorry piece. but apparently bill garen's happy with his performance besides not getting on the score sheet such as the penalty kill <laughs> i don't need him not even on the score sheet i just need him to do something like there's very few positives i'm finding in this game and again i don't want to be that i'm all like yip yip kaye i don't want to dog on players that much but i just I don't know what he's bringing. I don't know. And it's, he is my biggest rival on the team. He was that other player with Jewel on the back end where it was that two on one scuff yes. that led to that goal. Even yeah. Juice last night in the game was like, it's four on three moving down the ice. For what reason? There's a fight going on the back. Yeah. I just, it made no sense at all. Like, I, I don't get it. In fact, I mean, Russo asked about that play because we were all so curious about it. Like, why? What was he thinking? Like, I get sure stick up for your teammates, blah, 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 all of that good stuff. And I'm a huge advocate for it. Not but when you the rush is moving down. Jewel Erickson did end. not. No, exactly. Jewel Erickson did not need to step in and help. He needed to get back on the back check. And instead, it's a 2 1 Jets game, right? And um, Russo asked Hines about that post game which led to the four on three down low and game winning goal effectively. And all Heinz said was, I think there's some discussion points there. Like his whole game is a discussion point. Roll the film. Roll, Roll it. The like, film. what are you doing? Like, you're just not. And again, I think those mistakes happen certainly, but for him, I just, it's another bean in the bad pot and versus any ones in the good pot. It didn't help. That was bad. It's just a stupid decision. It liberty like, literally was WTF. It's almost like he's trying to overcompensate. He's like, okay, well, then I'll be the tough guy. It's like, but you haven't done that either. Like, you haven't done, oh, you haven't done anything that I can appreciate. And you know, it's probably not fair. I haven't made a concerted effort to really get to know him either. Cause I think if I really knew him, I would maybe be a little less harsh. I just don't, I just, I don't, I haven't, I just, mm. yeah. And that's all. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Do you feel better? No, I mean, this will be an ongoing rant forever and ever and ever, ever. Um, But, you know, that's a bad thing. Let's see. Talk about things that we are grateful in hockey because it is American Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving this week. Um, What are some things that you're grateful for this year, Kirsten? The team, all things considered, minus one or two. We know who they are. The team being healthy Mm -hmm. overall. Very different position than last year. Um, Kirill Kaprizov, obviously. obviously. How can you not? Yeah. Jonas Brodeen, because also obviously. <laughs> How can you not? Philip Gustafson and his play so far this year. I was going to say, because how could you not? Like, how truly, you not? how can yeah. you not be thankful for all of those things? I'm thankful for John Hines. I feel like I haven't given him enough credit. It's almost like a year to the date since mm-hmm. he came in, I think. Um, again, Thanksgiving is so late this year that it's completely thrown me off. Like, yeah, it's weird. It's, it's so late. Like, I'm like, when, what month is it? Like, I don't we know. It's fully just got be me in Christmas mode right now. And I am like, you know, me. I usually too. I wait until after Thanksgiving. That's just always been ingrained in my brain. Like, that's what I do. And this year, nope, I decorated the inside of the house. The outside is decorated. We went and got our tree last weekend. And now Mm -hmm. a large part of that is also, as you said, the Wild are home a ton in December. So I have no time after even this week for Thanksgiving. They're home on Friday, Saturday. And then you've got P-Dub on Sunday. Like there's Mm -hmm. just, there's no time. Never have any time. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a Jesse Spano reference from Saved by the Bell in case anybody got that one. It's pretty funny. I'm not addicted to caffeine pills, but I could be. Um, And... (laughs) Yeah, it's throwing me off there, but I'm thankful for John Hines. He has really, the team's just bought in. And I think what I really can appreciate about him is he's so ingrained in the details and the structure of this team and, and not to discredit what Dean Evson had accomplished with the team or even going back to Bruce or whatever, but John Hines is like an, um, a student of the game. Like he's constantly wanting to really learn the nitty gritty details. And I think you're seeing that difference in the Minnesota wild, because when there are games that have those errors, he's so focused on 
working those kinks out at the next practice. That's the other thing. They're practicing more under John Hines, which I think cannot be understated either. Like you're working out those little details, every single player. And that's why you're probably having these bounce back years. Right. I mean, they're getting their confidence because they know that they can work those things out. So John Hines, I'm grateful for him. Grateful for the players that you had mentioned, Kirsten. And Matt Boldy. Um, I want to also mention yes. how thankful I am for the Bolds. I've, you know, we've talked about how he's like matured in his game and just off the ice too, but I really saw that last night. It was basically in the locker room, there were scrums and I basically had a one-on-one -on -one with Bolds and even just the thoughtfulness of his answers, not to say they were ever bad. He's always been a really good interview, but it was just another level. Like you could see like, okay, you're a year older, right? Like you're, mm -hmm. you're doing this damn thing. Um, so that was really impressive, but yes, Bolds I'm thankful for. I'm also thankful for Jared Spurgeon's health. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think we were all scared. We're still all a little cautious about it, but so far no more setbacks, right? Like I think that's been an invaluable situation and, and having I, your captain's presence on the ice. Right. Right. Huge. Exactly. Like granted, yes, I'm sure he was in the locker room during those games last season when he couldn't physically play, mm -hmm. but being out there with your team cannot be understated. Right. I mean, his on ice play we all know it in Minnesota. I don't think it ever gets the national recognition often like Jonas Brodeen either, but yeah, Spurge. And then I'm thankful for the buyouts, not only because they're done, but because they are gone after this season. Let's have some fun. There was a man shout out to one of the contestants from last night named Drew um, wearing a Zach Parisi Jersey. And I looked at him and I was like, is that a Parisi wild Jersey? And he goes, Yes. And I was like, get rid of it. And then he goes, well, technically he's still on the team. <sighs> and I just eye rolled and I was like, I guess. And he said, once the buyouts are done, I'm throwing it away next year. He's and I'm like, as away. you should. Probably a $300 jersey. Probably. It was a nice <laughs> jersey. That away. But I'm like, people when they, when they burn jerseys and stuff, I'm like, you're just burning money. Like, why? Don't do that. Just don't do Some that. people have a lot of money to play with. I know, and if they want to sauce them my way. Perfect. Right here. Right here, too. It's Christmas time. Christmas time, guys. It's stressful. Mm -hmm. Um, there was one other thing that I was going to be thankful for, but I don't me is my brain. I mean, obviously, I'm thankful for uh -oh. you. We're thankful for all of our Bard on Beauties fans. Thankful for everybody who stopped out at TRs last week. Um, ton of fun. I love thankful how many for TR and Kathy themselves. So great. Mm -hmm. I love that they got to recognize that. And for our sponsors, Green Belt as well. No, it was going to be good, too. Oh, yes. Final point before we take a break and talk a little bit of P-Dub. Um, you know, we talked about Kirill Kaprizov, and I'm not trying to alarm anybody, but I know at the beginning of the year, I said I had my concerns of him re-signing because he didn't know how the team was going to perform. Again, for him, it's winning. And Kirill Kaprizov has certainly put himself in the conversation of $15 million a year, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody would scoff at that. And certainly Craig Leopold, as we all know, has said they will pay whatever amount. My bigger focus was... Can you prove to him that he's winning? I think the Minnesota Wild are doing that. I have now stepped back from the ledge. Like, I think there is enough so far this year to show him that. And again, in addition to Liam Ogren probably taking that next step, Nelia Yurov taking that step and getting over here next year. I think the way that the Minnesota Wild are performing right now has not only been instrumental to their success for the year, but in um, leveraging their hand for Kaprizov. I'm always on the ledge. I'm never going to get off the ledge because, <laughs> you know, you just cautiously optimistic. But I think right now they're in a good spot. I'm like feeling it. optimistic. Yeah, I am liking it. So there you go. Those are what we're thankful for. Uh, our secret word this week is going to be turkey. I was going to say optimistic. <laughs> It's such like a real word, though. You need like a weird word, right? Turkey is such a gimme. Fine. I don't want optimistic. Um, Snow globe. Oh, yeah. Because guys, look what came in the mail literally an hour ago. For those listening to the podcast, it is a Taylor Swift tortured poets department snow globe with look, a typewriter and around the typewriter. And it plays Taylor Swift, as you can imagine. It looks cute. I and I like snow globes, so I get it. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but 
yeah you can hear it as well as good as the let me vibe for a minute i'm thankful for my snow globe because this is <laughs> sick this is absolutely sick so we're committing snow globe secret word we're gonna take a quick break when we come back a little p-dub talk stay tuned Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here for Livia Weight Control Centers. Livia's holiday savings event is finally here. You could lose up to 10 pounds in your first two weeks just before the holiday season. Plus, get eight weeks free when you join Livia's award-winning nutrition program. Not to mention GLP-1 weight loss medications, semi-glutide, and terzepatide start at just $199 for the first month. Jumpstart your 2025 goals today. You guys, I joined Livia over a year ago. I am down more than 40 pounds. Could not feel better. Could not look better. And Livia's nutrition program has been so easy to follow that even during the holiday season, I know I can still continue to meet and reach my goals. Livia is your source for expert-led nutrition programs now, which includes expert-led medical care. All programs are personalized to you. That's what makes it so successful. And that's where you're going to find success. Join today and get your first eight weeks absolutely free. GLP-1 medications, semi-glutide, and terzepatide start at just $199 for your first month. No insurance required, plus FS and HSA eligible. Visit Livia.com, that's L-I-V-E-A.com, or call 855-GO-LIVIA and start losing today. We're back, and you know what else is back, Kirsten? PWHL season. Uh, your Frost home opener happening Sunday, December 1st against the New York Sirens. Banner raising time, baby. We're going to lift that championship banner to the rafters. Uh, fans encouraged to get there early. Going to be a fun, fun event. I kind of wish, the only thing, I wish they played either like Toronto or Boston for that opener. The Sirens don't do much for me. Yeah, I don't think that they do much for me either. Last year, I think I was underwhelmed by them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Boston would have been... Can you imagine the team that lost to you in the finals yes. standing there I'm for the there banner for raising? They probably did that on purpose to not add insult to injury. 100%. But I'm here for the drama. Give right? us the theatrics. Yeah, absolutely. Totally there for it. Um, speaking of theatrics, I guess we haven't given an update. I did attend PWHL training camp or media day rather two weeks, a week ago, two weeks ago um, and did address kind of the elephant in the room about Natalie Darwitz's unceremonious dismissal. Uh, Ken Klee had basically told me, yep, we're, you know, it's professional hockey. These things happen. And then I, you know, asked Kendall what it was like to have her name thrust into that drama as being a, a pushing force. And uh, she called it a false narrative. She said, you know what, that's, we know what I, our team is like. We're very close in the locker room. It's difficult to hear these false narratives about yourself about your team out there and she reiterated that it was a league decision it was never a team decision so that's that for me it's it's squashed again there's always going to be her side her side and the truth it is what it is um moving forward that's kind of all you can do right I mean there's I don't think there's a reason to dwell and and harp on it I'm excited for the team to return to defend the the title I bummed about Natalie's dismissal but at the same time you just kind of got to truck forward and turn the page. Yep. And uh, that's all you can do moving forward now. You ask questions, you get the answers, and now we're getting ready to start a new season as the defending champs, hoping to repeat and put the best product forward that you can now. And you're returning largely the same team on the Frost as last year as those champions. They have the target on their back. They had a pretty good season. My only other big question mark Taylor Heisey, she wasn't taking part in camp. She's wearing a brace. She's moving around fine. Like I've seen her at the rink and she seems to look fine. But I do wonder if she's going to be ready for the opener on Sunday. We'll find that out hopefully in the next couple days, but we will see. We'll find out just a few days away. And you need to have a you with Taylor Heisey. Taylor Heisey is the Kirill Kaprizov of that team. I would Absolutely. say, right? Yeah. Her grace. I think... Or Grace, yeah, Grace Zumwinkle. I think Grace Zumwinkle, people know she's good, but I think they don't give her... She's the Jewel Erickson egg. She doesn't get the full respect she deserves. Like, everyone knows she's good. She's super valuable to that team. But I don't think she gets all of the accolades she should. Here's how I would do it. Taylor Heisey is Kirill. Uh, just because she, yeah, she's more 
in the public eye, right? Like people True. recognize her name. I think that she's just become kind of the face of the league, which is great. She's well deserved. And then Grace is the Matt Boldy. Still, you know, fairly, I think more recognizable than maybe we realize sometimes. I think um, tremendous player. Yeah, I mean, they're both they're both young, but I would say Kelly Panic is the Jewel Erickson Eck. Mm-hmm. I feel like Kelly Panic has that grittiness, that fire, um, and also is very, very valuable to the team. So that's how I'm pulling, laying it out. Mm-hmm. Respect. Kelly Panic has a beer out too with Fulton, which I love. Love. love We're gonna have to go try that. it. Gonna go. I know, right? Let's I forget what it's night called. Out. Hold on. Give me give me one one moment, please. New beer release uh with Fulton Brewery with a portion of the proceeds benefiting our friends at Mosaic Hockey Collective which is a nonprofit uh focused on inclusivity my friend Meredith is in charge of that I love that group it's so great positives get back to the game but it is um called been there won that love love bravo I freaking love it like that's gonna be my favorite beer all winter probably let's go try it we should we love Fulton. All right. That sounds good. We'll get out there. Uh, we'll get out to the X all weekend long. Your Minnesota wild, as we'd mentioned, hosting the Chicago Blackhawks for the one o'clock after Thanksgiving game, black Friday game, and then seven o'clock against the Nashville predators on Saturday. And then P dub on Sunday at seven, five, right? It's five. at five. It's at five. That's good. I'll show up on time. Uh, five o'clock on sunday so we're full swing into hockey season as always we appreciate each and every one of you hope everybody has a fantastic thanksgiving uh we will have a special guest next week not that we're not good enough we're always good enough for you guys but we'll bring in some extra voices just to mix it up yeah what she said okay uh thanks to talk north royal credit union jim beam livia and grain belt as well as our friends at tom reeds there will be a december date announced fairly soon so until then we'll see you next week